If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. Now, Brendan, being one of the veterans on this team, uh, with the week leading up to Steelers week, obviously you're a special teams guy, we all know that, and typically special teams is where you're going to find some of the rookies, some of the younger guys who don't really know what this rivalry is all about. What kind of message were you trying to, and some of the other veterans, trying to instill in them, especially a kickoff, kick return, some opportunities where you can be out of control if you're too jacked up. Uh, what type of advice did you give those guys to prepare them for Pittsburgh? Well, there's there's two things. You know, you never let your emotions, you know, get the best of you. You know, you're going to be playing against the Steelers. You know, there's going to be some stuff going on after the whistle and you saw a lot of it yesterday. Not too much on special teams, but you really saw it on offense and defense. So our main thing was don't get any stupid penalties. Don't let them base you into penalties. And um, the most important thing we try to instill in those guys is it's your one-on-one -on -one battles. Anytime you're on the field, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. You got 11 one-on-one -on -one battles going on, and you have 100 plays of football of one-on-one -on -one battles. And every guy's got to win his own individual battle, and we're going to have a great game if, if the guys can do that. So that's what we instill in the young guys. And if, you know, everyone's going to lose one or two, but, you know, go win the next 10. And you stack those individual wins and you stack them and you stack them and eventually you dominate a football team and you know our group's known as a bunch of bullies we break the huddle oftentimes on special teams and our break is bullies you know so we're known as the baltimore bullies on special teams so we go out there and we try and bully people and just got to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups and that's what we try and instill in the young guys now speaking of penalties uh here because i run the joint and i drew the short straw and if you're going to punch somebody they, they all want it to be me yeah please not me <laughs> I, I think it's okay there was a penalty that involved you yesterday it did not affect the outcome of the game in any way just uh you know I, that's an emotional i mean you just kept going you just kept playing well that's not what happened you know what happened is that it's a horse collar and that's just illegal you know and i'll probably get a fedex on wednesday you know i'll pay a little fine <laughs> is that the way it goes that's the way it goes you get so, a fedex yeah really? you get a fedex from the league wow. but um i mean it just happens and, and the main thing is you don't get any stupid penalties you know if you're going to get a rough in the passer then you put a nice hard shot on, on somebody then that's a good penalty if you're going to get um you know a horse collar where you're making a tackle and it's an aggressive penalty then that's a good penalty you know if you get a penalty you know after a play is over for pushing or fighting then that's a stupid penalty you know but so you have to pick your shots if you're going to go out there and you're going to hit somebody you got to go out there and hit it or you got to go make a play but you know after the whistle you're not you know it's, it's considered a dumb penalty to get a, a penalty after the whistle so if you do it in between the whistle or something like that you know you got to be smart and sometimes those those penalties you might get minus 15 yards or whatever, but in the end, it's going to help you win the game. We are at High Tops. It's Monday Night Live on WNST. We're with Brendan Iambadejo. So explain, what's that like? For a guy like you, you're a veteran. I'm assuming there's not a, somebody grabs you by the neck and says, don't ever do that again. Because you know, right? I mean, it's not a, it's not the same as maybe it would be if a 30-year guy got the same type of penalty. Well, you know, today when we we um, we have all the we have a list of different things that we try to accomplish during the game, and you know, win the field position, um, set up our offense to score, um, defensive turnovers, sacks. So we have all these different battles that we try to win as a team, and one of them is no stupid penalties. And the coach actually put on the board that there was no stupid penalty. So um, the coach defended me. Um, it's just one of those things. It's a hard, aggressive penalty. Yeah, maybe if it was a younger guy, you know, coach would have said something different. So I, I don't know. Maybe I get I get a little I get a little, I get a little perks going to three right. bowls, I guess. I don't know. Tough to see Jimmy get hurt at the way he did that early on. I mean, I think everybody in the organization that wants to win, you, you're all pulling for the young guys. You're all trying to help the young guys. But there's a young guy there that you know we all felt like could be a difference maker, especially with the injuries we've had. Chris has been hurt. Foxworth's been hurt. A lot, you know, a lot, a lot of trouble in the secondary. We feel like we got quality guys. It's just a matter of getting them all onto the field. Now it uh, looks like Jimmy's going to be out a little bit. Yes, yeah, you know we got a lot of depth. We we finally have a lot of depth at corner, you know, and then two of our corners go down. So uh, one of our one of our guys, Haruki Nakamura, is a safety, so he was ready to go in there. And uh, we just put him in nickel. He was our starting nickel last year, bumped Ladarius Webb out to corner. So we still have some good depth out there, but uh, it was, you know, kind of depletes you a little bit when you lose two guys in one position. And now you're, you're looking for guys on special teams. And Foxy jumped in there on special teams. He jumped on in there on defense. And, you know, he, he was ready to go, but, you know, we we're going to hold him back a little bit. But we had to throw him in there just because, you know, the injuries that had occurred during the game, but they're professionals and they're ready to go and everything worked out. You're saying to these guys, dude, none of you are above special teams. Look at me. Look at me. This is how I make my living. <laughs> well, the, none of you are the above thing is about, He's you know, the captain. There, there's guys that have come and gone. There's guys that have made a lot more money than me that, that, you know, were, I mean, I'm a pro bowler, but there's guys that were pro bowlers or this and that, but, you know, their careers last three, four, or five years, and, you know, 12 years later, I'm still here, so... I'm kind of just quietly in the shadows, just doing my thing, and, you know, I'll be around for a while. Brendan Ibedejo, we are live out at Hot Tops. We'll step back, take a break. Luke is here. Drew's here.
here, although he's silenced right now watching uh, Djokovic and uh, Nadal. Glenn is running the show. I'm going to step out to the next segment, let you guys uh, have at uh, Brendan, and we'll talk some more football. 1 0! Beating the Steelers 35 7. Undefeated. Yeah, we're live at high time. Step out, take a break. Back for more. We're live on Ustream as well. It's all on WNST. We never stop talking Baltimore sports. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. 